Hey everybody, welcome to my suburban oasis. My name is Soleil and I garden in a zone 5B in Mid Michigan. And today we are going to take you around for our weekly garden tour. And I have to say that even though we haven't had any rain, I have had a chance to get out and do some sprinkling. So that has definitely helped the garden along. And I think you're gonna enjoy this tour. We have all sorts of new growth from last week, including new blooms. So let's take a look at everything that's looking good. Well, we'll just start over here on the corner of a deck for a change. So you can see our geranium. This is a Johnson's Blue Geranium, and you can see how large it's gotten already and how many blooms it has on it. Someone asked me why I plant these up against the foundation or up against the fence behind other plants, and that's because they get so long and lanky. They tend to fall over, and they look really beautiful kind of creeping through other plants. The potage garden is looking really good right now. Um, I definitely have had the groundhog come through and eat all of my lettuce. Uh, I've caught the chipmunk eating my strawberries, but we've got some of them covered now, so that's great. And I apologize for the background noise. If you can hear the neighbors, they're having a jolly good time in their backyard. I think they're having some wine and food with some friends, so. Here we have uh, just a small pathway that leads into the potager that's lined with Virginia, as well as some of that purple Telstar Dianthus. And then we have some gorgeous um, hookahs right here. And I haven't quite gotten all of the chives cut back yet. I'm still working on that. I'm probably about halfway done, but I think I'm getting close to being there. Lots of warmth has uh, come through but also some cool weather, which has actually been really nice to be able to keep some of these things from completely frying. I've actually cut back the sedum in these pots so that it can begin to um, basically bush out a little bit more. It had lots of blooms all over it and I thought it would just be helpful to cut it back. You can see my orange or my Potomac orange snapdragons are just so tall right now. I can't wait for them to bloom. They're just starting to open up. We have some beautiful pots in the potager with the lobelia and we still have some pansies that are blooming because like I said, we did have a bit of cool weather here that has kept some things much happier than they otherwise would have been. And the bunny tail grass right now is looking really good. It's very tall this year and it's super soft and fluffy. I just love feeling it. Can't help but touch it and um, give it a little rub as I walk by. The irises are really, really tall. They're all completely done blooming. I've cut back all of the blooms on them. We're hopefully going to get some berries on these service berry bushes uh, if they don't fall off because it's so dry. Over here, we have some tomatoes growing and I'm actually just seeing right now that we have a very first tomato starting. And I believe this is an early girl tomato, so that makes sense because it is one that has one of the shortest periods of time for setting its fruit. The asparagus fern is already up and we have those alliums, which were just regular old onions left in the ground over the winter and now they're going to bloom. They're gonna be beautiful. Over in the lady garden, everything is looking really, really nice. Uh, the foxglove are starting to bloom even more and we have the catmint blooming. The peonies are just about out of bloom, so I have cut some of those back. Um, I will say that the Wygela over here, which is a dark horse Wygela, all of the blooms practically dried up, basically on the ends. So the tips of them were dry enough so that they actually do, did not have the ability to open up this year, which is too bad because it has really beautiful deep blooms. And we have the pink mink clematis over here, and it is just out of control this year with how high it's gotten. It's climbed kind of over the fence and spilled back down. So it should be really pretty when it blooms. And uh, I see buds all over it now, so I think we're gonna have a good year of blooms for that as well. I haven't seen any buds on the pinky winky hydrangea yet, but that's pretty typical. It's one of the later ones to set buds. We see some of the opening act flocks here. And you can see I do a little bit of symmetrical planting around side this shed. We have the Patriot Hosta up front, 
We have that Telstar purple Dianthus. And then right next to that, we have the opening act blush. And then we have the opening act pink -a dot So the blush is right here. And the pink -a dot is a little bit taller and a little bit lighter. And they're both really beautiful. I do find that I get more blooms typically from the pink -a dot than I do from the blush. But the blush does look like it's going to have a good year this year. It has lots of buds all over it. And then over here, my goodness, look at this. Boom, chuck a lot of geranium. Isn't that gorgeous, you guys? Oh my gosh. Just look at the color on those blooms. It's like a purple and violet all mixed together, set against that deep, dark foliage. So gorgeous. Wow, I am going to really think about dividing that one and uh, using a little bit more of that throughout the garden next year. That might be a fun one to look forward to uh, dividing this fall. So we have lots more Dianthus blooms here and more Salvia as well. And this garden is pretty green right now. All of the hellebores have been trimmed up and the Wygela is no longer in bloom, but we are getting ready to see some blooms on both of these hydrangeas here. These are the Bar Harbor hydrangeas, so that's exciting. And I think we should be getting some blooms on these daylilies, which have a very beautiful white fragrant flower on them. I get a lot of questions about what these dark leaved trees are in my garden and this is actually a purple plum. It's called Thundercloud Plum and it is, that was by Monrovia when I picked it up. I'm sure you can get it from other sources as well. You can see the lungwort is now starting to push its new growth which is wonderful. It definitely has been much slower than normal to push out its new foliage after the blooms. And I think a lot of that has to do with how dry it's been. So hopefully over the course of the next few weeks, we'll begin to see those really fill out. Now you can see this hydrangea is pretty close to having its blooms open. Again, the Bar Harbor hydrangea here that is similar to the Annabelle hydrangea. I did get those little caterpillars that kind of sew up your leaves this year. They turn into a moth, I believe. All I do was, is peel the, the leaves open and that ensures that uh, the blooms can continue to grow on. So we have buds all over this tree standard of a hydrangea. It is the pink diamond hydrangea. And I'm just gonna get you close up so you can see how far along they are. It's about as far along, I would say, as my quickfire hydrangea, which is usually the earliest one to bloom in my garden. So that's pretty exciting for me that we might have another type of panicle hydrangea blooming that early in the season. Well, let's take a look at the half moon garden because that is looking really beautiful right now. We'll come along the back and then we'll, we'll traipse through the front afterwards. The ladies mantle is in full bloom right now and I think it looks really really pretty. I've definitely enjoyed that addition this year. Now you'll see that I've come through and I've trimmed most of my boxwoods into nice tight balls. So far I have a few of them left to go. I'm just kind of making my way around the garden as I do it. I'm really enjoying the growth on these Tian Shen shrubs. Um, they're just filling in so nicely this year. They've probably gone grown about two feet. So pretty amazing. Um, and they're starting to take on that lovely small tree form that I've been shaping them into. You can see we have some more of the opening act blush flocks right here along the back side of the privet. And you can get a sneak peek of that Red Riding Hood penstemon through here. There's also lots of buds all over the privet hedge right now. And uh, those do tend to have a really nice, sweet scent about them when they grow on. Now we have the Wizard of Oz Veronica back here that is just starting to show some colors on its buds. So I think those will probably be open by next week's tour. And you can see I had taken some cuttings of the um, 
incredible hydrangeas and I stuck them in the ground and I do have some nice new ones uh, coming in this garden bed now. I think our planters are starting to fill out nicely and you'll actually see some blooms on the geranium um, on the other planter. And I have to say right now in this garden bed, the salvia is looking beautiful and so is this high voltage rose. I just love the buttery yellow of it. There's buds all over it. So we're gonna get lots and lots more blooms yet to come. Aren't those pretty? Now the hydrangeas have definitely, or not hydrangeas, uh, these are hibiscus and uh, they have definitely grown, oh, I would say almost a foot this last week, despite the lack of rain. And uh, they are looking great. So tropical vibe. Here's those beautiful glowing penstemon, the red riding penstemon. Highly recommend that plant. And tucked back in the corners, I also have some Shebertii alliums, just for fun. And we have some white wands, veronicas that are planted around this garden bed as well. So I think we're going to start seeing those bloom soon. Yeah, here you can see that we do have some blooms on that Kaya geranium. Very cute little purple blooms. And uh, there's definitely more coming. Now over in the woodland border, as we start to look at it, I have to say in this particular bed, we are just flush with some of the scabiosa. I mean, look at the blooms on that. So last year I got lots of these on clearance for $2 a piece, and I just popped them all around the edge of this garden bed. And I think they look absolutely gorgeous. This is one of the few perennials that flowers pretty much all summer long. So I would say it starts right about now in June and then it just keeps going and going. So for me, this has been a really, really great addition to this garden bed and I'm really enjoying having it. You can see that we have some of this beautiful Brunnera getting much larger leaves as they continue to grow on. And the beautiful pop of color that the all gold Haconicloa grass brings to this corner of the garden, along with the summed substance hosta. There's so much going on in here, but I also feel like it's very restful because we don't have a lot of clashing colors or too many um, different colors in this garden. So I really like that about the woodland garden. You can see that the oak leaf hydrangeas, these are the jet stream variety, are starting to open their buds. I thought they might be open by now, but again, everything's going just a little bit slower this year simply because of the cool temperatures, the lack of rain, and prior to the cool temperatures, the super hot temperatures. So we just, it's been so wacky. I don't think the flowers know what to do, honestly. This is another pinky winky hydrangea and uh, it is really nice and lush right now. I think it looks great. And it has a really nice contrast against this Japanese maple with the Hakona Chloe grass. I just love mixing, mixing the textures and sizes and shapes of the foliage. It looks really great. Now, one of the hostas that we have in here that you'll see along the edge with a lime green in the center, tiny little white stripes, and the darker green around the edge is called strip tease. And the pink fizz hookerellas are still looking really nice, and I'm still enjoying their pink fizzy little blooms. We've gotten some nice new growth also on the rhododendrons back here, so that's great to see. Again, the lungwort back here is still flushing out its foliage from after the blooms, but I do think it will be filling in in the next few weeks. 
And you can see this hydrangea also is beginning to put its flower blooms out. I love, love, love the size of the leaves here, you guys. These are um, the Jack of Diamonds and they have a bigger leaf than Jack Frost does. And then there are bigger leaves yet on the Queen of Heart. At least that's how they seem to perform for me. And let's just come around at the front of this bed here so we can see the music box rose, which has started to bloom. And I think it looks really pretty with all of those foxgloves as well. Someone was asking me if foxgloves are for shade or for sun. And what I would say is that um, they do best in part sun or part shade. You can even put them in a pretty shady spot and not have to worry about them. Um, and they can take fairly dry soil as well. Um, in fact, the tallest ones that I have are back over here in this corner and they're at least six feet tall right now. These are, I believe, the Excelsior variety. I just grew them from seed last year and now they're blooming this year. So in this garden bed, we are starting to see the ultra pink flax bloom. It's right over here. And then this is the first frost hosta with the blue center and the white margins. It's kind of a creamy white margin. I think everything in this garden bed is looking really nice as well. I love how this Japanese tassel fern looks with the aurelia and that hydrangea. And you can see the hydrangea we planted, the blooms on it are starting to actually open. Aren't those pretty? They're so different from any others that I have grown, so I'm excited for that. Over here we have the Queen of Hearts Brunera, and then next to it we have a Mukgenia. And this Mukgenia is actually a mix between the Virginia and the Mukdenia plant. So they're very similar and they do like the shade. Um, I'm sorry, let me, I have to take that back because this one actually is the Mukdenia plant. I will show you <laughs> the mixed plant that was bred uh, in a minute. So I'm actually thinking about cutting back some of the stems on this foxglove because they are so tall and uh, they are going in the wind that some of them seem like they're getting a little bit snapped off. So I want to, um, maybe take care of that and see if some new smaller flowers grow on this one. We had the mahogany monster, not mahogany monster. <laughs> you guys, sometimes I struggle with plant names the same as you. This one's the mega caramel, mega caramel hookara, and I think I have a baby seedling right over here in the pathway, if you can see that right up against the rock there. That was how I got this other plant right here last year and it has been growing on this year and I think it's looking pretty good. So yeah, that one's going to grow into a whole new full mega caramel plant. Sometimes it's hard to believe. We have a banana cream too, Shasta Daisy, in this garden bed that is fully budded so it should be opening up really soon. Now I have this little bird house over here up by that fence post and uh, you'll hear the bird chattering at us as we go by because he gets really upset with me or she gets really upset with me when I get close to um, their bird house. Hopefully you can see that it's sitting there now and kind of flitting about around the house but it definitely does not enjoy me being close by. So I'm really, really enjoying this garden bed right now. We have some blooms coming up on the hookahs. Um, this one is the black pearl. And then we have lots of blooms still on the royal catchfly. 
And right behind that, kind of blending in and mingling as that um, violet dusk penstemon. And I think they look so beautiful together. And the pollinators really love both of them. And then on the end, we have the April night salvia and you can just see the bees buzzing all over that. Now in the back garden bed, things are also looking really great. My espalier apple tree has quite a few apples on it and I did put them in some nice little bags that hopefully um, will protect them so that I can eat the apples. And we have this beautiful goat's beard right here. This is Chantilly Lace. I transplanted it to this spot last year and it really seems happy with it. So I'm thrilled about that because I think it's just beautiful. So you can see about the size of the apples right now on the apple tree. Aren't those cute? I'm so excited. Last year, the groundhog ate all of them off. It was quite the bummer. But all the colors here are looking rather bright and cheery and lovely and just filling out in lush, aren't they? So there's that little bird. I think he's gonna fly in and feed his brood. I wonder if I can back up enough where he will actually fly over to his, there he goes. Yeah, it's like, get away from my nest. Okay. Well, over along this border, which is in the sun right now, because it faces west as the sun's going down, we have some soapwort that is a perennial and nothing's really blooming right here. Um, but we are starting to see some blooms peek out on the Midnight Masquerade penstemon. So I think those are all gonna open up pretty quickly here. But all of the hookahs, and these are the bilberry kind, are definitely setting bloom. You can see we have a white rose back here. I think that's called iceberg something or other. I can't remember exactly. And then we see lots of buds on the daisies in this garden bed. And these are sweet daisy, birdie daisies. They're about two feet tall, which is pretty much what they said they would get to. And I'm really excited about seeing them bloom this year. They really have filled in nicely and uh, provided some great height in this garden bed. I think that this basket is looking pretty good as well above this Toscano Barberry and we have some buds on the quick fire hydrangea and this is a Jupiter's beard it's rather short this year for whatever reason and then we have some beautiful climbers we've got Clematis I think this is Comtesse du Bouchard I have to look it up but I'm pretty sure that's what it is and I'm not sure what the one is at the bottom there. But look at the Eden Rose, you guys. Just look at all of the buds on that. Isn't that beautiful? They're so just thick and lush. It's amazing. They did get a little bit dry during our hot dry period. But uh, since having some water, I feel like it's really done a good job of perking up and uh, blooming for us. While we're here, let's just take a really quick look at the planters today. I think they look really nice and that honeysuckle vine is definitely starting to put out the blooms. Isn't that pretty? And I think it goes so well with this lantana, the Cosmo Royale. Love those bright colors. I can't wait to see these cannas bloom, you guys. They're supposed to be a beautiful, like bright orange pop of color. All right, looking over here, we have a gorgeous barberries and gorgeous salvia. These are the Violet Riot. These are by Proven Winners and they are quite lush and full this year. I absolutely love this look. I think it turned out great. The hookahs also are looking rather wonderful. 
And uh, we have that blue spruce sedum that kind of creeps down here along the rock border. And right now what it does is it pops up about 10 inches tall and it's getting ready to put out these really bright yellow blooms and they will bloom for a couple of weeks usually. It will be interesting to see what they do this year because everything's kind of on a different schedule. But we are starting to see some blooms open up on the Etoile de Violette clematis. Now, uh, this one is definitely got a lot of growth on it as well. And um, it's gotten some water today when I did the sprinkling, but I can definitely tell that that one is struggling a little bit this year. I'm still enjoying the gorgeous blooms on this penstemon, which is the pristine blue and the pristine pink. And we still don't have any blooms yet on the Candu hydrangea, but I see they are coming. Now you can see that the Sicilian honey garlic has been pollinated, and so they are back upright again. And I think they look great. They're really pretty. The Rose Marvel Salvia that's right here is absolutely stunning. This is just one of my favorite colors to use in the garden besides purple. It's like a fuchsia pink. I just think it's a really nice pop against the green. And here you can see the buds on the quick fire hydrangea right here. Isn't that gorgeous? Pretty soon we're going to have blooms on panicle hydrangeas, you guys. It won't be long and it will be hydrangea season. Can you believe it? I hardly feel like we had a June and yet here we are. Mid-June. It's crazy. Look at this beautiful clematis. Oh my goodness, you guys. Aren't those blooms gorgeous? And so many of them yet to come. Now, I think this one is called Crystal Fountain, but whenever I see that one online, it always looks like it's more of a blue or violet color than the deep dark purple that I have on mine. So I'm not absolutely positive. And I planted it so long ago that I don't have a tag for it. So I just don't actually know what it is. Um, if you guys see it and you know what it is, let me know. Um, you guys have helped me before uh, with some of my past um, cultivars that I didn't know the names on. So it's great, again, to share the information with each other on YouTube. It's so helpful. Now here we have the All the Rage Rose with some more foxgloves. Isn't that a beautiful color? It's just such a nice coral peach. It's like a sunset to me. I love it. And the spireas are just starting to open up. But we still have some wonderful blooms on the mock orange. And this mock orange is a double bloomer. So it really is quite floriferous. And it smells wonderful still. This is definitely a second full week of blooms and there's still some buds on it. So I'm really surprised in the past it has kind of struggled with blooming. So I think it's really coming into its own. I think it's its fourth year in the garden. So sometimes it just takes a little while for blooms to actually really establish themselves on plant. And then look at the multi blue clematis behind it. Such a wonderful contrast, isn't it? So here we are coming out into the front garden bed and you can see the royal ferns have really filled out on the left here and on the right we are getting ready to have our gorgeous Leatris hedge and it is filling out quite nicely. Can't wait to see that bloom. And amazingly enough, this PG hydrangea standard also has blooms that are getting ready to open. So many buds everywhere on the hydrangeas, it's thrilling. But our salvias are still going strong. So let's take a look at the sun garden. You guys, we had a garage sale today, so there's cars everywhere and stuff everywhere. <laughs> but here, look at this, it's so, so nice and full. Um, these salvias are about halfway done. They're almost to the point where I like to start cutting them back probably um, towards the end of this next week, I will cut them back. So you may not see them in the next garden video because usually when I cut them back, I cut them back all the way to the ground. 
but um, it just depends on how they're growing and what they're looking like. I think the container gardens are looking pretty good. I feel like the Dianthus are finally starting to put out blooms again. They really got stunted by the cold and the drought and the heat and the not heat. It's just been crazy. And the Osteospermums back here are also starting to bloom along with the Lobelia. It's great. Now we have some more high voltage roses out here. They're a little bit smaller. I don't feel like they get as much uh, moisture out here. Um, so I feel like the soil is a lot heavier, but um, they're doing pretty good anyways. I would say I feel like a lot of my plants are doing pretty darn good considering the lack of rain that we've had for the last month. It might even be longer than a month. Check this out, we guys. You guys, we have, um, the gara is starting to bloom. Isn't that pretty? They get buds all along the stem and then they just open up along the stem. Super excited to see those bloom. And we still have blooms on this black lace elderberry. And my plan with this, someone was asking me about what am I gonna do? It's gonna get so big. Yes, it's gonna get big. My, my plan is to prune this into a small tree form. And I'm still loving how it looks with that uh, spirea at the base there. It's a really nice contrast, isn't it? The penstemon is blooming something amazing. And these are so great. They just keep blooming and blooming. So I just wanted to come over to the neighbor's side and show you the Oscar Peterson rose, which continues to have lots of really pretty blooms. I can see some of them from my side, but they're definitely much more visible on their side. And it does make for a really nice approach to our driveway. Let's take a look at the mailbox garden bed. So we haven't looked at this one for a while, but as you can see, the clematis over here also got really long and tall and flapped over. So it's blooming nice and low this year and it's absolutely beautiful. I love the color on this one. It's almost a little more purpley this year than normal. I feel like it's more of a, a maroon last year. It's interesting. I think it just depends on the year and what's in the soil and how much rain you get, all sorts of different things contributing to that. All right, let's take a look at the sun garden. So the sun garden is now pretty much in its full bloom. Um, I would say it is looking fantastic. I really love, you know, the color along the edge and I can't wait till some of that Telstar purple Dianthus fills in in some of the little gaps that we have, but everything just starts to blend really nicely this time of year. You can kind of see the contrast between that blue ice salute salvia and this Dianthus. And the bobos are just starting to get some buds on them out front here as well. And usually those are a little bit slower to get them. So um, I was actually surprised to see that. I think that the little star firework uh, of these Schubertii eyes are looking really nice still. I just love how they look with the salvia and the different colors around them. And the sedum is, is uh, definitely growing well. We have nothing to worry about in this garden bed and we have some really pretty pink salvias as well. Down here we have the Dreamland Geranium and the Yuki Cherry Blossom is just starting to go over. The alliums in the center here are done. These were like the gladiator alliums, so they're done blooming, but the seed heads are still catching the light in a really beautiful way. And so I'm just leaving them up a little bit longer. And you can see that most of the blue has faded off of our Veronica. This was the Venice Blue Veronica that so many people asked me about. Absolutely gorgeous. What I will be doing with this is cutting it back by about half. And that way it won't get all floppy. It will stay nice and compact and like a tidy mound throughout the rest of the summer. I have never been able to get it to rebloom, but it is definitely worth growing just for those couple weeks of blooms that you get during this late springtime.
We have some daisies out here that are going to bloom. These are the uh, goldfinch daisies. So these will be a beautiful yellow color and they really will light up this space. Now, there's nothing wrong with these boxwoods. These are actually variegated boxwoods. And um, when they put on their new growth at first, it looks green and then the green starts to fade to the variegated foliage. So I will need to come through and prune these. I have not pruned them yet this year, but we'll make them into nice little tidy balls as well. I like that neat and tidy groomed look and I love the look of spheres in the garden. The viburnum has put on some nice new growth. Isn't that nice? And I am expecting that we'll get some blooms on it this year. I haven't seen any buds yet though. Well, as we turn around here to the new garden bed, you can see I've done a good job at not planting it yet. I do need to come along and tidy up the edge of the stone border. And that's because when I first make these garden beds, it is an issue with the grass coming in. And then as my husband trims at it and I pull the weeds, then it's really easy to keep it that way without the grass growing between the rocks. So the Paint the Town pink or magenta is starting to go over now. The blooms have kind of gone away, but I expect we'll continue to get some more after this. You can deadhead these as well. Um, if you don't want to take, you know, your secateurs to them, a nice pair of pruning shears does a great job. All right, well, these Paul's Glory Hostas up front have super duper filled out for me. And they're absolutely beautiful. They change color as they open up. They start off this dark and then they turn to yellow in the center. It's really beautiful. And we have some foxgloves in this garden bed. And I came through and I pruned the Japanese maple and you can actually see I missed picking up a branch here. Let's get that out of there because it was coming back over the roof. So it was kind of preventing rain and sunlight from coming down through there and starting to hit the roof. So I pruned that back and it has definitely made a difference. We have some Monarda in the front here. This is part in my Cerise and behind it is a June Hosta. Everything's looking pretty good in this garden bed. This time of year, um, it looks like it's going to get really nice and hot. And so I definitely try during the summertime to keep my bird baths and my small, you know, watering holes filled with water for the animals to be able to come through and drink. And I always am seeing birds, chipmunks, squirrels, all sorts of different creatures coming for drinks, even the bees and different um, insects come through and get water from it. It's especially important during times of drought. This is the gold edger hosta. And it's a really nice showy hosta. It stays pretty uh, compact and low and spreads quite wide. This one right here was supposed to be mouse ears. It was supposed to be a miniature blue hosta, but you can see it really isn't very miniature. It is really pretty though. Our blue father Gilla, the leaves have definitely turned a nice color of blue at this stage. Looks really nice between our two houses right now. Everything looks pretty lush right here. But as we get closer down towards where we get even more sunshine and face the southwest, things are looking a little bit rougher down here, but I haven't watered at all. Um, you can see though that I've been dragging my giraffe tools retractable hose all the way to the back so I can get some sprinkling done. The ranunculus in this garden bed have started to go over, but the lobelia is still going strong. And we have the verbena boneriensis now putting up some little bloom buds. I love verbena boneriensis. This is the one that was a volunteer in my seed tray this year and I just lucked out with that.
sometimes they're hard to find in nurseries and they're fairly expensive as well. So super fun if they reseed in your garden. We have some drumstick alliums right here that are just starting to get ready to open. Just look at those. And see all the tiny little extra flowers in there. And then as usual, this garden bed just looks tidy all the time for the most part. I really don't have to do much to it. The only thing I haven't done in here that I should come and do is prune the boxwoods and get rid of that daffodil foliage that's peeking through uh, the hostas. Otherwise, I'd say it's looking pretty darn good. Well, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this garden tour. Again, I apologize for any extra noise you may have heard during it. I certainly hope that it was still enjoyable, relaxing, and you were able to see some fun things and take in some blooms. I hope you guys are getting rain or that you're not getting rain if you've had too much. I hope that you guys are enjoying the weather and getting out in your garden and really enjoying it. Thank you so much for joining my channel and being part of our community. We'll see you next time.